I always take a big breath before we get started and my screen was still showing black. So I went <gasps> and then the screen took a little bit longer than usual to show up on my monitor. So I went. <laughs> so anyhow, let's start again. Whoops. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our morning get together live here on Facebook. And good afternoon to our friends that watch us on YouTube later on in the day. It is a pleasure to see you. What do we do here? We exchange headlines. We exchange questions, ideas, comments, and suggestions about how to best enjoy our lives here in Puerto Vallarta as a community of English-speaking locals. And today, on March 17, on a Thursday, we are very happy to be here with you, as always. There's all kinds of things and updates to share today, from many walks to... Um, changes in mandates to more lies in the local government to um, uh, the river. And thank you for that, querida prima. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I knew I had forgotten something. Where is my St. Patrick's Day graphic? I did prepare one, but I forgot to set it up. It's not really my thing, but I appreciate how it is very important to some, and some people will go out and dress in green and celebrate. So... Happy Thanksgiving, <laughs> happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone that celebrates it. As always, um, we would love to encourage you to, uh, oh, Deb says it's all in sync today. Deb wrote a really funny commentary yesterday. She's like, your voice is not in sync with your mouth. And I wrote her back and I said, you know, of all the absolute powers that I have, one that I haven't been able to conquer is to change this that when the sound of my voice comes out and and set it offset to the movement of my lips i'm glad that things are better in the world of facebook for you again a lot of the things that happen are beyond my control but we always take a look to make sure that everything's okay so <clears throat> if you are new let us know write the word new in your comments if you have something truly important to say uh please add a letter q a capital letter q at the beginning of your comment and we might as well get started with the good stuff. Well, yesterday, right after we ended our broadcast, Governor Alfaro uh, came online and uh, announced updates to our health-related mandates as we get closer and closer to Semana Santa or Holy Week which has nothing to do with Santa Claus. And I must say that was the sweetest question from yesterday. Why do we celebrate Santa on April? Well, because the word Santa means holy and it has nothing to do with a big, sexy, bearded guy. In a nutshell, everything is open at 100% and the only mandates uh, left are wearing the face mask as before, indoor, and outdoor 
and the provision of sanitizing gel as you enter businesses, although I'm still in the habit of carrying my own, as sometimes the stuff provided from one business to another differs, and sometimes it's really, really sticky. To make, us, to make it easy for us to understand what's going to happen moving forward, here is the bottom line, or what the Jalisco Health Board is calling the five agreements. Number one, all events and all businesses can now operate at 100% capacity. Number two, the use of face masks remains in place in open spaces and in enclosed spaces. Number three, the requisite to present a certificate or proof of vaccination to enter businesses and, and events has been eliminated. Number four, all the sanitary filters like placemats and chingaderas like that, thermometers, are no longer to be used in um, businesses and commercial establishments. The only thing that remains, as I mentioned before, is the use of gel. And number five, religious festivities, patron saint fiestas and things like that, can happen, as the one in PTL is happening right now, uh, with prior advance notice to the health uh, authorities of Jalisco just to review the sanitary processes. So as you can see, we are, well, getting better all the time. And let us just hope that um, we continue this trend and that we can hold on to it as long as possible. Um, let's see more on Governor Alfaro. He is in town today to provide details on how and when the Vehicle Verification Center that was built on the road to Ixtapa will begin operating. We recall that the implementation of a Vehicle Verification Center has, been, has created a certain amount of discontent and criticism amongst the locals, local population, as um, the cost to verify your vehicle will be 500 pesos per year. And uh, this is yet another expense to take into account. I can see how 500 pesos a year may seem superfluous to some, but for others, it is definitely something to consider. We have more lies from the local government. Apparently, Mayor Michel had announced that the team of Israel, Israeli, Israeli, oh, that's a tough word. The team from Israel that came to Puerto Vallarta to evaluate and hopefully improve the operation of Seapal were not paid, or at least that's what Mayor Michel had said. It has now come to light that they were paid 130,000 US dollars and the contract was not even open for bids as the government contracts should. So the dealings between our mayor and Seapal director, director Salvador Llamas are well, just about as smirky as the water flowing down the Kuala River. And I can attest to that, as you will see later on in the broadcast. One of the most seriously injured fans at the violent attacks in Querétaro during a football game a couple of weeks ago finally woke up from a coma. He had been hospitalized since March 5th, and he was the last victim to be to still remain in the hospital. The Querétaro's attorney's office announced that out of the 25 arrest warrants that went out, 20 people, 23 people, I'm sorry, have been captured and remain in jail under further investigation. Finally, work reconstructing Manantial Street is, um, is has connected, has connected, has started. Work reconstructing Manantial Street to connect Colonias, Buenos Aires, and beyond has started and uh, continues. And will we just learned that the project will take about six months to complete. So uh, we can either be ready to start placing our bets or we can summon the catapult. Maybe it's best that we take a look at the weather instead. <music> And weather says, if you abolish day daylight savings time, you'll be improving the lives of future generations who never have to live with it. Don't you want them to suffer as you have? <laughs> That's what snarky weather has to say today. 
uh, what I'm interested in is our stats. And we are enjoying 25 degrees Celsius right now with very low humidity, 37%. And our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 78. Our forecast for today calls for a clear day with a high temperature of 30, low temperature of 15. Tomorrow, Friday, we'll have a clear day with a high of 31, a low of 16. And uh, Saturday, we'll have a high of 31, a low of 18, and another clear day. So the weather is just picture perfect. It's exactly what we want this time of year, and we hope that it'll remain like this as long as possible. But it's beginning to be the time of year when uh, it gets warmer and warmer. And what does Luna do when it gets warmer and warmer? I don't understand this, but, you know, where did she go? Luna likes to sneak under my, under my blanket and mess up my bed when I make it in the morning. And uh, that's not her usual spot. Her usual spot is closer to the pillows. In fact, I go and say hello to her and she reacts, but not this morning. Say something. She's like, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> oh, I said the big word. I'm sorry about that. Uh, no, actually, I'm not. So I want to tell you about yesterday. Yesterday was absolutely fun, fun, fun. I did all kinds of things. I started my day after the broadcast, well, updating about Governor Alfaro. But then um, I had a little bit of everything for starters. I did a walk. Well, I actually ended up doing like four walks yesterday. The first one, I wanted to walk Calle Ecuador, which is right here. And it starts right at, um, at the Libramiento. And it continues through uh, the back of the stadium. And then it continues on to Cinco de Diciembre. And that's where it starts getting a little hilly. And I climbed and I climbed and I continued and I continued and I went all the way up here. And here I discovered there's a restaurant called Ay Caramba. And I walked in there to check out the view to show you how it looks from up there. And I mean up there. This was not a faint hearted walk. And then I continued back to the main avenue and ended up at Parque Hidalgo. Of course, Halfway through my walk, I realized that my good microphone ran out of batteries. So I don't know exactly what's going to happen with that. I know that the walk is going to be good enough to share here, but I don't know that we will publish it on YouTube. But we will. We can always walk it again. Then I continued into town. I continued into El Centro. I was a little hungry and... Um, I had a quickie at one of my favorite tacos de canasta place. Then I went to the yarn shop and uh, bought some yarn. Yeah, I know. I have a lot of yarn, but I had to buy a little bit more, just a little bit more. And then after that, I went to the Naval Museum and recorded a walk around. And I was concerned about the fact that it would be too dark in there because the exhibition halls are a little dark. But I looked at the footage this morning and it came out just perfect. So... I think we're going to enjoy the Naval Museum tomorrow, if that's what you'd like to see. After that, what happened next? After that, I went over to check out the Kuala River, because I told you that I would. And um, and where is my footage? Da, 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 no, 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 we don't want the evil parrot today. Ah, here we go. Okay, first, I wanted to check out if there was really a stenchy smell on the river, and I can tell you, it is a little smelly. First of all, we took a quick stop at the pedestrian bridge, which is now beginning construction. This is where they had said it's embarrassing to cross. Well, it's no longer embarrassing. It's actually impossible to cross because they're starting to do the work. But all this water that is sitting around, you know, it's just not, not very good smelling. It is questionably smelly. And then after that, of course, I wanted to take a close look at the at the new Insurgentes Bridge and see whether it is really at 98% completion. 
and it's going to be ready by Semana Santa, said who? Take a look. Okay, so we are once again walking towards the bridge just to get a sense as to what's going on, what is different from last time we were here. And uh, let me take a quick sneak peek back here. Buenas tardes. So you can see how most of the construction or the bridge itself seems to be finished at least on this side that's in Canto on the back and it's huge looking. now let's see what's happening on the actual intersection with the street aha uh -huh. interesting so now Okay, this shows you just how tall this thing is going to be. It's gigantic. And how hard everybody's working to get everything done. And I am now walking across to the other side, which is possible. And there you have it, just like that. I have walked to the other side of the island. But does this mean that this is close to being finished? I don't think so. Let's go back. Buenas tardes. Let's go back and take a quick look. I mean, they are working really, really hard. Listen to all that noise. So this is probably, I'm actually walking through what is going to be the underground passageway, or the under the big passageway. So the good news seems to be that they are indeed working really fast and really hard. But will this be finished by Semana Santa? I don't think so. <laughs> As I said before, my hope is not that they get finished, get the project finished fast, but my wish is that it gets done properly. And that was my quick and dirty update of the Insurgente Street Bridge. I say, let's build that catapult. <laughs> ciao. Ciao. When did I get in the habit of saying ciao? I don't know, but ciao. Anyhow, so that was that. And then after that, I had a lovely, lovely visit with my friend Richard Lucas, known locally as Gouda Gabor. And Richard was... Um, instrumental in getting me involved in uh, as a judge in the so you think you can rise events that took place recently at um, at teatro vallarta and i really wanted to visit with richard because you know he is a business um, i'm an entertainment business guy he's worked contracts and deals uh, worth thousands and thousands of dollars for entertainments throughout his entertainers throughout his career and I wanted to touch base with him about how working in the RISE event as a judge really sparked something within me to get involved one way or another in helping young local talent find their groove and find a, a path to a more successful career as musicians or entertainers here in Puerto Vallarta. And I was happy to learn that my friend Richard was equally moved by the experience and what he's doing with the remainder of his shows at Encanto for this season and what he has already decided he will do next year is to, yeah, obviously he's a performer, he sings, he dances, he dresses up, he has a lovely voice, he has an accompanist, but he is going to focus on becoming... Um, a catapult, no pun intended, a launching pad for um, new and upcoming artists, young artists from Puerto Vallarta. And I am so very happy to see that um, 
uh, an entertainer that comes from elsewhere actually decides to spend time empowering local artists. And that is totally right up my alley. So once again, I want to encourage you to catch Richard or Gouda Thursdays at 7.30 in, at Encanto. I think he has three more weeks to go. He has special guests every week. Um, I won't be able to go tonight, but I'll definitely be there a week from tonight. He's going to have Enoch, one of the finalists and one of the, the people, uh, the artists that I'm hoping to mentor in one way or another as much as he will let me. Um, so if you don't have any plans for tonight or you don't have any plans for a week from tonight, it would be a pleasure to cross paths with you at Encanto at this particular event. And of course, I've also been in contact with the nice uh, musicians from the band Eyes on Earth, another one of the finalists, and they are going to be performing tomorrow night at Rey de Oros at 7 o'clock. I think it's free cover. Oh, yeah, it says right in front of my nose, no cover. So if you want to hear a very solid, tight rock band from Puerto Vallarta singing in English and Spanish, one of the three finalists from this event the, the So You Think You Can Rise, they're going to be performing tomorrow at 7 at Rey de Oros. Yours truly is going to be there as well. So I'm looking forward to further connecting with the band and um, hopefully find a way to impart some experience and knowledge upon them, if they'll let me, of course. And speaking of events, let us not remember, let us not forget, ah, let us not forget that uh, this coming Wednesday, we have our very own meet and greet, which should be a lot of fun. 44 people have responded. Some people have responded interested. Please, as the date nears, change or kindly consider changing your interested to attending, if that is the case, uh, so that Gina can have a better idea as to how many people to expect. And before we dive into our usual comments, a geeky update, if you'll indulge me. The Webb Telescope has finally put out its first completely focused, completely brilliant image. And I have this news item in Spanish, but I also have a news item in English to share with you on how the alignment uh, of the telescope is complete. So, you know, I'm not an astronomer, but I'm going to be so psyched to see the images that are going to come out of this amazing instrument. And with that, I am going to turn over to your comments and see what everybody is up to. Let's take a quick look. Da -da 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 -da. And we see a lot of good mornings, which we love. What is the name and location of the restaurant where you get your stuffed potatoes? <laughs> I love it. The name is El Santuario del Taco, and it is located on Francisco Villa Avenue um, in uh, Colonia, in, in Fluvial. And um, you remind me, Jonathan, that I haven't added them to our Taco Tuesday map, which I'm going to do sometime today. Thank you very much for that reminder. Let's see what else we have. Do, 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 do. May your every Irish wish come true. Um, well, I had an Irish wish come true one day, but if I give you too many details, then you'll end up having to endure me rather, to, rather than enjoy me. So we'll keep it clean. Why not? Um, Looks like you're wearing orange. Used to do that as prote protest to St. Patrick's Day. Susie, I wouldn't know because I'm Mexican and we don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day here. So if it if my wearing orange offends someone, what can I say? It's not a cultural thing that I am connected with or attached to. So I certainly hope I'm not offending anyone for having an orange shirt and orange pillows and an orange painting back there and so forth and so on. Um, Luna gave me a PAQM. I would like to make a deal with everyone. We don't want to wear out our acronym and we don't want to make people feel like they don't belong by putting out acronyms that we don't explain. 
Um, but I'll explain this one one more time, and then we can save our reference to piss. What is it? What was it? It's um, pissy ass queen mode. We're going to save that until we actually announce our workshop. So moving forward, uh, let us let us go back to our healthy habit of keeping our acronyms to the minimum so that everybody can relate to the conversation if we could. Much appreciated. My cousin Norma says that Luna is beautiful. Of course, Norma was the first mom that Luna had. I adopted it, her from my cousin Norma Besos before she moved to the United States. Let's see. Luna says Shh, the queen is sleeping. Usually she reacts in one of two ways, Jenny. When I head to that side of the apartment, um, either because I'm going to the bathroom or whatever, either she doesn't react because she wants to be left alone, and that's clearly what happened this morning, or she will meow, indicating that she wants me to come over and stay in bed for her a little longer, which is very tempting more often than not. Diane says, people are not wearing masks. I say, Diane, people are not wearing masks everywhere in the world, and that is unfortunate. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Dan says, looks like it needs a whole bunch of concrete before it is ready. Well, you know, they may get it ready so that it's passable for vehicles, but I sure doubt it's going to look pretty, you know, like painted and so forth and so on by the time Semana Santa comes around. But, you know, it's finally getting done. And more importantly, I like the fact that everything seems to indicate that the passage under the bridge is going to be at the same level as the rest of the island. So um, friends of mine like Den and Kathy who rely on, um, on wheelchair will be able to do it comfortably. Uh, I finally figured out a workaround to not being able to see if anyone likes my posts. If I like it first, the other likes then show up. Facebook makes no sense sometimes. I totally agree with you. Uh, let's see what else. Da -da 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 -da. Jenny says, orange is the new green. I love that. I love orange and green. If you visited my home, which is su casa, everything I paint or everything I do is either orange or green. And that's, that's just the way it is. It's my favorite two colors. Anyhow, this brings us to um, a little bit of everything that we showed today. Oh, uh, here's a question or a comment from Heather before we go away. I actually think the bridge will be done by the Semana Santa as most of the progression has happened in the past 10 days. Now, usually 12 workers from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. or more. Well, Heather, I am not trying to jinx it. I just hope that is the case. Oh, and one last thing that I forgot to mention. So after I had my get together with Gouda, I had a lovely, lovely dinner at Bonito Kitchen with my friend Eric, who is a new full-time Puerto Vallarta resident. Welcome home, papi. It's great that you are here. And after that, I ended up walking back all the way home. I wanted to enjoy the breeze, and I had many thoughts, good thoughts on my mind. And I couldn't stop thinking about whether my walks would be <clears throat> successful or not. One ran out of batteries. The other one was too dark. Well, I'm happy to say that I did check the footage this morning for the Naval Museum, and we should have a nice walk around of the Naval Museum tomorrow. But... When I walked back home, I didn't just walk back home. I actually walked back home along the Malecon, and I whipped out one of my cameras, and I did a nighttime walk along the Malecon. And I was pleasantly surprised to see how many people are out there enjoying it. Um, I'm not going to get into the whole issue of whether they were wearing face masks or not. We know what to do. We can just avoid the people. So yesterday, I was wiped out. And yes, it was lots of walking, but it's nice to be able to go out and accomplish as many things as one can on an outing. And now it's good to know that I have a lot of editing work in my plate. I Again, I hope I'll be able to do something with the long walk along Ecuador Street. And I will also be editing uh, the nighttime walk for a future broadcast. But do expect us to do a walk around of our, uh, at the Naval Museum tomorrow. I'm excited to show you what I saw in there. Between now and then, as always, please take good care of yourself. Stay happy. Enjoy the city if you are here. It is such a gorgeous time to be out and about and exploring everything we have. 
Have a great time and I will see you hopefully again tomorrow. Ciao, ciao.